Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm going to be addressing a really really popular build, it's my £200 gaming PC build for 2016. If you'd like to see any other PC builds in both UK and US currencies, hit the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like rating but without any further ado, let's get into today's GeekerWatt video. So the first question I always get asked uh, when um, I do these PC builds is how will this build perform? So you can see performance figures on your screen now and this build is aimed towards 720p in the more popular slightly older titles such as World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, Dota 2, a lot of the Valve games particularly, and this build will perform especially well in Minecraft as well. It is going to run a couple of the latest AAA titles, perhaps GTA 5 I will find out, you'll be able to see on your screen, but it really that isn't really where the sweet spot's at, however it does have the infrastructure to support those AAA titles, something I'll get onto in just a moment's time. But first let's start with the CPU, for the CPU I actually went for an APU, it's the AMD A67400K, it comes out the box clocked at 3.5GHz but is overclockable, it do mind that you aren't going to be want to overclocking on this CPU anyway so don't really take that into consideration uh, due to the fact you're only using the stock cooler and a third party cooler really isn't good value at this price range and it is only a dual core CPU, that bit does make it a little bit of a grey area for the latest AAA titles. But for the motherboard, I've gone for the ASUS A68HM-K. It's a micro ATX form factor, which is around the middle of the uh, the three most popular form factors, mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX, going from smallest to biggest there. So mini ITX tend to pay a premium for small and compact, and ATX you tend to pay a premium for big, loads of resources, loads of features, but micro ATX certainly strikes a really nice balance. It's got PCI 3x16, uh, which allows you to put a graphics card in later on down the line. I'd recommend the GTX 950 or R7 360 from AMD. Um, you've got SATA 36 gigabit per second, allowing you to supplement the fast speeds from an SSD. And you've also got USB 3, allowing fast transfer speeds and more power sent over the USB bus. It comes for £50, which is a great deal, and houses the APU. It can support up to... Um, uh, AMD's highest end FM2 plus CPU which is the Athlon X4860K which is a nice solid quad core so the upgrade path is there and as I said supports the graphics cards which is a nice feature. For the RAM I went for the Kingston Savage 4GB, I went for one 4GB DIMM of DDR3 2133MHz speed. Now this is the first upgrade I'd recommend making and I'd recommend grabbing another 4GB DIMM of this Kingston Savage and shoving it in the other slot when you have the money because in some cases it will provide twice the performance, you heard me right twice the performance because with two 4 gigabyte dims uh, with an apu and um, that gives you dual channel which gives you twice the bandwidth and also gives you a lot more um gives the apu a hell of a lot more of a, a bus shall we say to send data down the 2133 megahertz speed is also extremely important and whilst you pay a premium for it it is very justified the 2133 megahertz speed is because a normal graphics card will have its own onboard gddr5 memory the system memory uses ddr3 and gddr5 is very expensive and also very very fast hence why it's used in small quantities within GPUs so for 2133 megahertz it just gives the APU a little bit more of a helping hand on the speed front for storage I went for the Seagate Barracuda it's a one terabyte capacity drive giving you over a thousand gigabytes plenty of room for all documents data even some of the latest uh, most demanding and storage AAA titles and for 35 pounds this Barracuda drive is a great choice you can also go for the WD one terabyte um, caviar blue uh, but this just happened to be slightly cheaper at the time at 35 pounds for the case i went for the exigmatec recon it's an atx mid tower case and at 22 pounds it's extremely solid it's got front panel usb 3 and 2 allowing for um uh, the, the faster transfer speeds and higher uh, higher higher wattage over the bus uh, higher power over the bus but also gives support for those legacy devices that prefer usb 2 because usb 3 can be a bit picky sometimes with slightly older peripherals for the power supply, I went for the EVJ 430 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply. It's 80 plus certified, uh, which means that it's going to be performing above 80% efficiency at all time, outputting over 360-ish watts at all time, and that is uh, verified by an external company, which all the power supply manufacturers pay for. So um, this power supply will run incredibly, incredibly well, and the fact that it's efficient uh, will not only save you power at the wall, but also increase the longevity and lifespan of your new system. And for just a little over 200 pounds by a couple of quid this is a very very solid 200 pounds gaming pc build if you enjoyed today's video and like the brand new audio quality drop a like rating make sure to subscribe uh, follow my twitter at geekwatt leave any questions or queries over on twitter or in the comments section below and we'll as always see you in the next geekwatt video